welcome everybody. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the upcoming new schema for uh, PMP provisioning. Uh, we are going to release uh, with the next uh, master merge uh, of uh, PMP site score, a new uh, release of the provisioning engine and a new release uh, of the provisioning schema as Bert already said before. Uh, so the schema will be schema 2020-02, so February 2020, and uh, it is uh, the next one after September 2019. We introduced just a few new uh, capabilities because likely we are almost uh, feature complete. And so as soon as there is uh, something new, we uh, try to follow uh, the uh, object model of SharePoint and uh, CISOM and all the rest APIs. But right now we uh, provide quite a lot of functionalities through the uh, provisioning engine. Uh, specifically, uh, let me uh, show you what we introduced with the uh, latest and upcoming schema release, which will become uh, the default one at the engine level as well. So here I am uh, in the uh, current master branch, but if I go to the experimental branch, which will be uh, merged into master uh, next week together with the uh, master release of PMP site score, you can see that schema 2020.02 will become the default implemented version in the engine and in PMP uh, PowerShell. And in order to reference the schema, uh, you will simply have to use the 2020.02 version instead of the previous one. And I would suggest uh, and remind you uh, to configure in any provisioning template a reference to the schema location in order to have uh, IntelliSense uh, in uh, Visual Studio whenever you edit the uh, XML file. Let me move uh, to the uh, solution, let me show you what are the uh, upcoming uh, new functionalities uh, from a schema perspective. So first of all, uh, let me start with the sample schema. We introduced at the tenant level, so in the PMP tenant uh, element, a new child element for configuring uh, the um, sharing settings at tenant level, of course. So. Here you can uh, uh, configure uh, all of the uh, sharing settings uh, for your tenant. You can enable or disable sharing. You can configure the default permissions for sharing links. Uh, you can define the allow list or the block list of domains and stuff like that, simply using PMP uh, uh, provisioning engine and eventually PMP PowerShell. Moreover- Sorry, sorry Paul, yeah. can I slightly increase the font? Um, sure. I know that I'm getting old, but- uh... No worries, Thank I'm you. getting old too, so no worries. Now I can see better as well, so. <laughs> okay, so these are the settings that we introduced for the sharing settings. Moreover, another set of settings that we introduced are at web settings level and site settings level. So in order to better support uh, the search experience and specifically in modern sites, uh, we introduced the search box in navbar option where you can configure uh, uh, where you want to see and when you want to see the search box in navbar. And these are the options available as well as the URL for the search uh, center at web level. At the same time, we have the same settings for the site collections. So you can either configure these settings at the site collection only and inherit those settings at web level, or you can do custom settings uh, in specific websites within a site collection and keep on having uh, a, a predefined setting at site collection level using this uh, uh, section. Moreover, from a team's perspective, and let me see if I'm lucky enough to find uh, the PMP teams uh, element easily okay not so easily okay here we are uh, i have in the um, pmp team element where we can declare a new team uh, that will be created or upgraded uh, with the delta handling we introduced a new attribute which is allow create private channels for member settings because it's a new setting that you can nowadays configure using team and uh, uh, last but not least, uh, we introduced some other uh, useful attributes uh, uh, in some already existing elements, like for example, when you create uh, in a sequence uh, a site collection, which will be a team site with no Office 365 backing group, uh, like uh, in this scenario where I declare in a sequence that I want to create a site collection and that the site collection will be of type uh, team site no group. Now we introduce the capability to groupify an already existing team site no group, which basically will become a, a 
a, a modern team site with a group. So we can uh, create uh, or groupify that team uh, later on, simply providing the groupify equal true attribute. And if you will do that, uh, you will also have to provide an alias for the uh, Office 365 group that will be created, as well as uh, you can specify the classification. You can define if you want to have a public or a private group backing the team, and you can decide if you want to keep the old home page or if you want to uh, convert to the new modern home page uh, the site. So uh, those are the main options that we that we introduced uh, in the schema. Just to give you an idea uh, about how it works, uh, uh, here I have uh, a PowerShell uh, uh, session uh, already opened. Uh, as you can clearly see, I'm a developer because I'm using PowerShell ICE and not the PowerShell console only, but okay, you can blame me if you want. But uh, this is a session that I prepared where, first of all, I can show you uh, how you can convert an already existing- Sorry, Paolo, Sorry, Paolo. Yeah. I will mess up your demo. All of the developers are using Visual Studio Code. So <laughs> you're kind of a- Old school developer. Yes, of course, I'm still I'm, ISE, so, Well, sorry. we already agreed that I'm old, so. <laughs> <laughs> fair point. Fair point. So uh, here I have a schema which is based on 2019-09, and I want to convert that schema into the new schema version. You can easily do that using the convert uh, PMP provisioning template command let. And let me show you how. Uh, of course, uh, here I have a schema which I can show you using code because I'm becoming younger. Uh, and <laughs> here we have the 2019-09 schema with all of the settings. And of course you can use the convert PMP provisioning template. I will override the already existing one. And I can show you that the output will be an updated uh, template with the new schema. And the update will not be just uh, uh, an update of the namespace reference, but actually if there are any changes in the outline of the schema, uh, we will uh, keep them into account because when we run the convert uh, PMP provisioning template, we deserialize from the old schema and we serialize into the new schema. So we completely change uh, the outline if needed uh, of the provisioning template for you. And this is a very uh, useful command let whenever you want to keep all of your templates up to date. Every now and then I still uh, uh, see customers who are running very old uh, uh, templates they should simply convert them with convert PMP provision template to our, the latest release. Once you have a template, uh, you can connect to a site. Let me do that. And this will be a site that I'm using uh, just for uh, the sake of showing you the uh, new functionalities. So let me log in. And this site I'm going to use uh, is the uh, following one. If I can find it, here it is. This is the target site, and I'm going to update uh, some of the settings uh, of the sharing setting is the, in this site. So if you uh, look here in the sharing uh, uh, policies, I don't have any uh, sharing settings, so I simply cannot share uh, content in this demo tenant. Uh, and if I look uh, inside the old school page, we can see that we don't have uh, any sharing capability outside of the organization, and those are the default settings that I have in my tenant. What I can do, by applying this template that I will show you. I can configure uh, sharing for external users and guests. I can configure 30 days of expired policy for links. Uh, the default file link will be for view. The default folder will be for edit and stuff like that. So you can see here all of the settings, including for example, an allow list for the well-known contoso.com. So if I run, the apply PMP provisioning template against the current site providing that XML template, you will see that in a matter of, I didn't connect properly, sorry about that. But luckily I was already connected before, so I'm still good that I provided a wrong password, but still it worked because I was already connected before. And now if I go back here and I refresh this page, you will see that now I have all of the settings that I configured in the provisioning template. So I was able using PMP provisioning to uh, set up my tenant from a sharing perspective, as well as uh, from a search uh, setting perspective. If we have a look uh, at the template, uh, here we configure at the web settings and at the site settings, some uh, parameters for the search center URL, for example. And if I go to my site, 
in the site collection settings, you can see that I have exactly the uh, search center URL that I configured using my uh, PMP provisioning template. So pretty useful. And as I said, just few uh, small changes to the already existing schema, because basically we are almost feature complete. And so we uh, try to do our best uh, to be always uh, up to date. And as soon as there are uh, useful new capabilities in CISOM or in the REST APIs or in Microsoft Graph, uh, we include them in the schema. And usually we have a release uh, every three, four months. Uh, so three, four releases every year. That's all on my side. If there are any questions, feel free to ask, or if there is any feedback visa, I'm all here. Yeah, I think that's it for now. So, and, and like I said, so just to, just to kind of a recap, the provisioning engine and the schema, so which you can use to automate things in Microsoft Teams. It supports OneDrive, SharePoint, multi-site collections, all of that stuff. And you can automate tenant level settings or site level settings. And, and the easiest way to actually see provisioning engine or one implementation of the provisioning engine in practice is to go to lookbook.microsoft.com. But behind the scenes, there's multiple ways of configuring an automation of tenants. And maybe some of you who are listening might be like, yeah, why would I set those tenant settings using a tenant template? But maybe it doesn't make sense for you, but there are customers and partners who are automating hundreds of tenants and, and automating and controlling hundreds of tenants. And for them, uh, controlling the tenant level settings in this kind of a way for templates makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm.